Hello Sunday J Club people. Uh, today we're going to talk about a Bible because it's Bible Sunday. I brought my Bible to show you. There it is. Very big Bible. It weighs nearly seven kilograms. I don't think I can quite hold it up with one hand. No, I can't. Very heavy. How many books am I holding up? Do you think just one? Actually, I'm holding up 80 books. The Bible is made up of lots of books inside it. So this is 80 books in here. It starts with the Old Testament, which is about the Jews learning about God before Jesus was born. Then this Bible has got an Apocrypha, which is a few extra books, about 15 extra books that sometimes um, go into a Bible, they sometimes they don't. Mostly older Bibles had them in, had it in. And also the New Testament, which is starts with Jesus' birth and is all about the life of Jesus and also uh, letters that were written after he died. A lot of them from St. Paul, who you learnt about last week with Holly and Della and Leo. Uh, but there are letters written by other people as well. So when I'm holding up this Bible, which is very heavy, I'm actually holding up 80 books, not just one. This Bible is very old, 250 years old. So for 250 years, people have been learning about Jesus from this Bible, it's such an old Bible. Because it's old, it looks, the writing inside it looks rather strange. Some of the S's, not all of them, some of them look like F's. So I'm just going to open up a page and we'll see if we can find one in this book. Um, so Israel here looks like I-F, but it's I-S, Israel. And the children of Israel said, you can all read said, but look, it looks like an F in front of it instead of an S. So it makes the book quite difficult for us to read. You have to know about that. Um, and here it says song. Looks like fong. So, it's a very, very old Bible. And we're going to have in our story in a little while about uh, somebody and their Bible and the effort they went to to get a Bible. The story today will not be a story from the Bible but it is a true story anyway. So see you in a minute. Mary Jones and her Bible. Many, many years ago, a young girl lived with her parents in a small stone cottage in the Welsh countryside. We're not really sure what happened, although legend has it that Mary Jones longed for a copy of the Bible, but could not get one. The story goes something like this. Mary's father was a weaver who worked hard to support his family, and although they didn't have much, they were happy. Mary was a good girl. She did her share of the household chores without grumbling. She fed the chickens, cooked, scrubbed the floors, and helped keep the house tidy. She even helped outdoors when she was needed. On Sunday mornings, Mary and her parents, dressed in their Sunday best, walked the little chapel in the village two miles away. There the family sat and listened to the wonderful words shared from the Bible. Mary marvelled at this book and longed for a copy of her own. As the months passed, Mary's longing for a Bible increased. I must have a Bible. 
I must have a Bible, she begged her parents. But her father explained gently, Mary, you know Bibles are expensive, and your mother and I haven't much money. Mary did know that, and so she was going to save up for one, no matter how long it took. I'll do jobs for other people. I'll save all my pennies. I'll do anything just to have my own Bible, she thought. And that's exactly what Mary did. For six long years, she saved all she could until the day came when she had enough money to buy a Bible. She went to tell her parents, and then they all told her teacher what she'd done. He explained that there was a man in a town called Bala who had a number of Bibles. Mary, now 15, told her parents that she was going to walk to Bala. Her father protested, Mary, that's nearly 25 miles away. But there was no changing Mary's mind. She'd waited too long for that. So, with her purse of money and some bread and cheese tied up in a bundle, she set off. The journey to Bala seemed endless. Mary followed many paths, crossed valleys and streams, and found her way around hills. Her weariness grew, and her aching limbs seemed almost too much to bear. But the thought of owning her very own copy of scriptures spurred her on. Eventually, she came to the brow of a hill from which she could see the edge of a town. Dusk was falling, and candlelight had begun to flicker in cottage windows. Mary's heart pounded with excitement. Here was Bala at last. Mary had been told to find a well-to-do gentleman called Mr. Charles. After knocking on several doors and asking for directions, she found his house. She ran up the garden path and knocked loudly on the large oak door. As it opened, the words tumbled out. I'm Mary Jones. I've walked 25 miles to get here. I've saved up six years to buy a Bible. I've got the money here. You can count it if you like. Please, can I have a Bible? Mr. Charles was taken aback. You'd better come in and tell me all about it. But first, you must have something to eat. He smiled kindly and beckoned the housekeeper to take her into the kitchen, where she was given food and shown the Bible. After she'd eaten, she told Mr. Charles everything, and he was greatly moved by all she had done. You are fortunate, he said, holding up the Bible. This is the last one. Mary stared at the Bible for a long time before taking it into her hands and thanking him with all her heart. When Mary arrived back to her own village, many people were there waving and cheering, wanting to see her Bible. As she held up the book for all to see, she murmured a few quiet words. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Mr. Charles. Mr. Charles had watched the young girl until she had disappeared over the hill. As he returned to his study, he thought of all the other Mary Joneses who must be wanting Bibles, not only in Wales, but in England and Scotland, Ireland and many other distant lands. Soon after Mary's visit, Thomas Charles went to London to speak to some very important people. Because of people like Mary Jones, some of Mr. Charles's friends eventually helped form the British and Foreign Bible Society. This society helped boys and girls and grown-ups here in this country and far-off lands to get their very own copy of God's Word, the Bible. And the society is still doing that nearly 200 years later.
Hello, now you know the story all about Mary Jones and her Bible. It's an amazing story because that little girl working so hard and saving all the money has made a difference to the whole world because that's what started the Bible Society and that is still going now and it reaches all sorts of countries and all sorts of languages all over the world. I'm not going to do craft this week but I've got a challenge for you. The books in the Old Testament, 39 of them I think, I know five off by heart, the first five I can do in order, I think. I'm not looking to check, so I'm not cheating. And I think they are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Numbers. I can do a bit better with the New Testament. I can do eight, and I'm sure they're right. They're Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Corinthians 1 and Corinthians 2, so I can get to eight. Now, I'm going to church hopefully every week for the next month. If any mum or dad or carer can tell me that you can do more than me, that's either five in the Old Testament, more than five in the Old Testament, or more than eight in the New Testament, I will have a prize with me for anybody who can remember in the right order more books of the Bible than I can. Okay, so that's a little challenge for you for this week. Uh, now we've got a prayer. So hands together. Thank you, Lord, for those who gave their lives to give us the Bible in our own language. Please help those who are translating and printing the Bible in faraway places so that one day the Bible may be read in all the languages of the world. Bless those who teach us to understand what the Bible means in our own country as well as in other lands. Amen. I hope you have a lovely week, J Clubbers. And don't forget to learn those books of the Bible, see if you get a prize. Bye.